huge convoys into the Mediterranean, the great Allied armies under General Eisenhower are kept supplied. As they go eastwards, the convoys get nearer to enemy sea and air bases. Navy men who escorted the famous mortar convoys make little of the comparatively small dangers today. America has recently paid a tribute to the services rendered by British liners, without which it would be impossible to move large Allied armies to their many theatres of war. Supplies for all the hundreds of thousands of men now under General Eisenhower unfailingly arrive. Well over a million tons of stores have been unloaded on these coasts since the original landings. It has all had to be convoyed through dangerous waters and the Royal Navy has done the job. One commodity, coal, now reaches the ports in adequate supplies. In exchange, the country sends Britain iron ore. An enemy air attack. Every warship in the port opens fire. In the southern part of the front, the Royal Navy sees that the 8th Army is supplied with ammo, which is hurriedly landed onto lorries waiting to rush the supplies forward to feed the advancing troops. <laughs> Meanwhile, the enemy has been pushed out of Gabis and the work of repairing the roads blown up by the retreating Axis forces starts in earnest. A never-ending stream of lorries, tanks and guns moves relentlessly forward. By the expressions on the faces of the townsfolk at the arrival of the British troops, there is no doubt that they are happy to be released from Axis domination. <laughs> Nazi prisoners. They have had enough of the relentless battering the Allied air forces and armies have given them during their headlong retreat from Alamein to Tunisia. Generals Alexander and Montgomery meet the new air officer commanding the Western Desert, Air Vice Marshal Broadhurst. This meeting spells more trouble for the Axis. The fighters take off from an aerodrome somewhere in the Western Desert. as fighter escort to this formation of bombers. The fighters are operating as overhead cover whilst the bombers do their stuff. finished, the fighters peel off, and the next thing on their program is a little ground strafing. <laughs> Meanwhile, 
Meanwhile, the Army makes ready this captured Axis aerodrome for the arrival of the RAF fighters. First mines must be cleared, then bomb craters filled up and the runways rolled out. RAF ground crews have arrived too and are busy getting things shipshape. Ouch! Here come those fighter lads again. Their advance aerodrome is now ready for them and this quick changeover has made them so many miles nearer to the retreating enemy. The tremendous pounding of the Allied air forces and the devastating fire of our tanks and artillery wreaks havoc on these Axis trucks tanks and guns. More prisoners. Since the Allied breakthrough on the Marith Line, over 30,000 of them have so far surrendered. General Eisenhower, Commander-in-Chief of the Allied Forces in North Africa, visits General Montgomery to formulate future plans. At dawn, the attack on Wadi Akarit commences and after heavy fighting and continued air support, the position is captured. one of the Mediterranean ports again. Off the troop ships come British paratroops, distinguishable by their special steel helmets. We are fighting a great battle against U-boats and shipping losses are serious. Nevertheless, the enormous demands of North Africa are being promptly met. powerful Allied armies in North Africa is a triumphant demonstration of British naval power. 